Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. Today, it's Monday the 18th. We got snow last night. We got an inch of snow, three tenths of rain. We were hoping to do anhydrous today. We actually got started on anhydrous yesterday, which anhydrous, for those of you guys who don't know, is the main ingredient or main fertilizer for our corn crop. There's many ways to put it on, but basically anhydrous ammonia is nitrogen. There's plenty of ways to put on nitrogen. We just choose anhydrous because it's the most cost effective. No anhydrous, no field work's probably gonna be happening today, but there's plenty to do. We actually had some issues getting the anhydrous rig going. I think they're working on that. The 190's put back together. I stopped at a store this morning to go grab some stuff to put on the sprayer. And more than likely, I'll be doing a little bit of some minor field work, some boundaries this morning, but we'll see what we get into. It's also extremely windy out today. So that's fun. I don't know where the side, oh, side by side's right there. I was just gonna say, I don't know where the side by side's at. Which windy is good in some sense because it's, good, because it's gonna dry some stuff up quicker. And we want it to dry up quicker because of the following reason I'll show you soon. It's just disheartening, that's for sure. That's why. Rain, 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 rain. We're supposed to get two inches on Friday too. Just sickening. Got all of our seed in. The green boxes are Beck's. We have a lot of Beck's, be actually mostly Beck's beans. And about half Beck's corn. Half Cornelius corn. So we got all of our seed in, which is good, because we're gonna hopefully be putting some stuff to the ground soon. Now we had a neighbor put some beans in yesterday before the rain. That would've been nice, but we are not even close to that. There's the sprayer. And you guys might be wondering what that tube was that I had with me. I'm actually gonna replace this tube, this is a sight tube. How I actually can see how full my sprayer is. So I'm gonna replace that because it's pretty uh, kind of fogged over with chemical residue. We also need to get going on this thing. Because I'd like to spray whenever uh, it dries up next, but we'll see if that actually happens. But I can't even spray if I don't have a trailer ready. Just another thing to add to the list. You guys okay? It's almost lunch time. Instead of going out with the side-by-side -side and then coming back for lunch, I'm actually just gonna work on the sprayer. This tube here. I'm gonna get it cleaned up so uh, I can put it on the sprayer. Good enough. So this is the tube I'm replacing. It's a sight tube. So you can see how, how many gallons, how full I am. So it's pretty faded. You can kind of see it's pretty disgusting. That's why I'm pulling it off. So here's the old tube. You can kind of see it's chemical stained. Can't really see much. So putting the new clear one on. And here's my ace in the hole this year. Got a little fishing bobber, three quarter inch bobber going in this one inch putt tube. Well, it's supposed to. We'll see if it actually does. So we'll see, but hopefully that'll help me see a little bit better. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but that wind is gnarly. So that's not perfect, but it'll work. The tube has been laying flat for about a year or so, so it's uh, kind of a little bit crinkled. So hopefully that bobber trick will work. I'm confident that'll help. Just give me something red to look at that floats with the water. I don't know, we'll see. So I got it all hooked up, so now I'm gonna try and clean this up. Maybe switch radios. I think we still have the radio in the combine, put that in the sprayer, and then just kind of see what else needs radios. Curtis and Nathan have been swapping batteries in the 400 and the 8050. The batteries are six and seven years old respectively, so they need to be changed. Planner's all rebuilt, but now we need to raise the marker arms and pull the drive shaft out for sure on one side, maybe both, because how this planter works is it's hydraulically driven. The hydraulics drive the drive shaft, and then it's got air clutches on there that uses an air power. When you supply pressure to it, it activates a clutch and just lets the shaft spin and not drive the row unit. That's how we get our two row shutoffs. I'll explain that a little bit later, but in order to service that, we need to raise this marker up so we can pull the shaft out. And that's not an easy job, so we're gonna try to do it in the shed. And to do that, we gotta pull the combine and the sprayer out. Ah, leaking oil probably from the overflow, whatever this is. Here's the combine. Gonna take these Midland radios out. These are fantastic farm radios. They are the number one brand that I would recommend. We've been using them for, this will be our fifth year using them and they are awesome. Highly, highly, highly recommend them. Link will be down in the description. We run mostly MXT 115s because they work, they do the job, they have pretty good range. And the best thing is they're very portable. You can switch them out in like 30 seconds. Just watch find a spot to put you guys. Unhook uh, it from the bracket, unhook your antenna, take your mic mount, unhook your power, and you're done. 
literally 30 seconds once you have it initially installed. This thing is fantastic. Highly recommend them. Link will be down in the description. Coupon code if you want them too. Got my MXC 115 mounted up. And I got my suction cup mount for my field view, my iPad. So we're just gonna keep kind of swapping accessories around and see what else we need. Alrighty, one bloody finger later, I got the climate field view puck out. And I just got a call from Curtis saying that dinner is ready. So I'm gonna get run after I just about fell. What's the old rule? One or two points of contact. Farmers, that is. It's a joke, always three points of contact if you can. Grandma calls. I'm coming, Grandma. It's cold, my fingy hurts. Just got done with lunch. I'm gonna take off on the side by side, but in order to do that, I need the monitor that is in Steiger. Because this monitor is the same one that I use in the side by side. So here's the plan for now. Curtis has his monitor on the tractor. It went bad. So he's gonna head down to DeWitt, get a new one for the Anhydrus tractor for Big Blue, and then he'll be good. He's gonna work on that all day to get that ready. My great uncle Bun is gonna work on the planner. He's gonna basically go keep going through it. We got another couple days of going through this planner to do. So that's what he's gonna do all day. And then Nathan and Pat are gonna be basically kind of floating. They got some cow stuff to do down uh, at Pat's place. We had another set of twins, so we gotta mess with them. Then they gotta go do chores down at the South Farm. Then they're gonna come back here, either help Uncle Bon or help Curtis. And hopefully about six o'clock or so, Curtis is gonna get putting on some gas, running some smoke. And then hopefully by then, I'm gonna be doing some boundaries in about four or five hours, I'll be done. Can come back here, get the new, get the Chrome Stack 340, and go get the new anhydrous bar. So that's the plan, let's get it going. It's also very windy. Enough. All dolled up for the 30 mile an hour winds. Ready to go. That would have been bad if you know I would have ran out of gas. That would have been stupid of me. Try not to get Nathan's nice truck all dirty. I think that's gonna be part for the course for today. So this piece right here Nathan bought last year, this bean stubble. It's about 40 acres and it adjoins to a piece my uncle bought 15 years ago to the west. So now we have an 80 acre field. So that's the first time seeing it. Expanding the family farm. I love it. I gotta get all dressed up, because you know it's cold. This is fun. I love this. I have to keep telling myself because this is much of a I have to keep telling myself because this is much of a So this is exciting, as I said before. This is a new piece. So we have a 40 and a 40. We're making an 80. So that's exciting. I mean, we got awesome stuff on the farm. First time on the new farm. And yeah. So we're actually going to have a dozer come in here in the probably the next week or two, take out this entire fence line which connects these two fields. And that's how we're basically going to turn that into an 80. Can't wait because uh, it's needed. There's some uh, bad washouts and stuff there too. Just finished up 74.4 acres with all the waterways taken out. It's actually two eight, two forties combined to an 80, but you put in the waterways we're not going to plant at all. We're saving seeds, so we're actually only planting 74 and a half acres. So let's load up and go to the next one. Woo, it's cold. So what I'm doing is, I am marking our waterways. What I'm standing in right now is what is called a waterway. It's a way for water to go. We have we are intentionally taking acres out of production and putting them in the grass to save our soil. The hill, the camera does not do this justice, but the hills are nasty in this farm. It's one of the worst that we have. I literally slide down sideways down some of these hills. This is one of them. So. When it rains, water has to go somewhere because you know gravity's a thing. 
So, because one, when water goes, it goes to the point of least resistance, down to the trough of the, trough of the hill. So, if we just planted corner beans, the root systems are only 15 inches apart or 30 inches apart. That's not going to hold soil. Whereas grass, you can see, it's thick. It's really going to hold that soil in place. So that's what I'm doing. I am marking where our waterways are, so when we plant through them, it's going to save us seed. When we spray this, I don't have to outline the fields, which makes us 30% more productive and a saving chemical. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm spending a lot of time in this thing and freezing my butt off. farm to go. It's Nathan's Rennenfield, Field to Smith North. dug down with the mini X and still hasn't reached the bottom. Now that's a boulder. Woo -hoo! This thing is giant. It's easily four feet in the ground right now. This thing's past my hips. That's cool. It's a little wet in case you can't tell. Let me get this tile or something so it drains. So there's this field, 112 acres. Nice and flat, good, 60 plus acre chunks, it's going to be awesome with farm. Oh man, just finished up, I'm frozen. Let's hook this thing up and get it going, get out of here. Woo, that was cold. But hey, I'm finally done, two and a half days on that side by side. One miserable hair day. And boundaries are done for the year. Kunal's big service truck right there. Oh, that's awesome. Ooh, what do we got coming here? A big 9R. John Deere. Looks like they got the uh, 8050 ready to go. I see the monitor in there that we went that went bad. They swapped it out. And the coulter's there fixed. And I see my dad just rolled in. Just kidding, that was Curtis and my dad's truck. Man, it is straight miserable out. I didn't realize it when I was just out driving around just because I was just cold. But the wind's like blowing 30 mile an hour. Like this isn't Saskatchewan where Mike Mitchell's at. This is Iowa, dang it, come on. It's not supposed to do this. And it's a high of 42 today, so that doesn't help. But luckily it's supposed to be 70 this weekend just with rain every freaking day. Isn't that just a pretty tractor? It's already getting full of crap and I give it another week or two until it's a uh, Hartung Farm style paint job which is just used in full of poop. This is what it is. Whew, feels good to get the side by siding done. So now I can start putting the monitors and GPS stuff back on the equipment. I'm gonna put the receiver on the sprayer. Oh, I get down without killing myself. Now I'll slot the monitor back in. Now I think we're ready to go. I got my monitor. I got my iPad mount. Got my radio, got my charger for my iPad. We're ready to spray, guys. Last thing that needs to happen is before I actually put some water in this thing is we need to put the big tires on. The floater tires will probably go on on Wednesday or Thursday, you know, when we get our inch to two inches of rain. And then I just gotta put water in it and go calibrate it. Now I'll put the staggers in. Gucci, I took the Bluetooth puck off so it doesn't uh, suck battery trying to search for something. Now I'm going to grab all the USB sticks because I'm actually going to go ahead and get a new basically file written, work with Ryan tomorrow and get all our new files written with all the boundaries that we have and get them all, all of our equipment this year. Uh, I feel prepared, most prepared I've ever been in that in the last four years in that side of things. From this like, overall preparedness, we're still doing pretty decent. 
We're not as good as last year, but we're still doing pretty decent. Just did a bunch of nerd stuff, downloaded all the data off of the three USBs, two off our combine, one off the side-by-side, -side. that way I can get them all up in the cloud so we can have access to our data. No. Go to cupboard settings, I'm curious what that is. Just got done doing nerd stuff. Got the monitor and everything set up in Curtis' tractor, so now he's got GPS on it. In, uh, in big blue for the anhydrous rig. So I think we're done for the day. We're going to tell grandma and see if she's ready for dinner. I tell you, this is a bad day for me. This weather don't work with me. Yeah. Well, it's... I'll make your hamburgers right away. Okay, no rush. Oh, grandma. So because the weather forecast looks absolutely abysmal, basically after starting Wednesday on, we're going to probably go, try to go really hard tomorrow. We're going to try to get that anhydrous rig right there going going before lunch we're going to pick up the other anhydrous rig anhydrous bar and get that going after lunch hopefully and i can get up here and do some chiseling we'll see but hopefully we can get her going because it's mid-april it's going to be may here soon and we don't have time to lose so i'm going to go bring some radio stuff to try and hook up the new to us magnum the 2013 magnum get it hooked up with some nice midland radios oh the buick's had better days muffler fell off nothing that a grinder can't fix Glad it happened here instead of on the road. I swear I'm gonna get blown away here. This wind can stop at any point. Let's go get a bite to eat. At least the cows are enjoying it. Well, thank you, Grandma. Oh, I feel 10 pounds happier and 10% happier. Ah, my grandma's food's delicious. So let's go put stuff away and head home. Expecting tomorrow will be a big day. Hopefully a big day in the field, we'll get three tractors running. Cross the fingers. I knew it felt colder. Couldn't figure out why. Then I realized I don't have my coat on, like an idiot. But before we end the video, guys, I guess I never circled back that uh, those fields that we were in, Nathan bought that 40 acres, and we're gonna make that a big 80. That's gonna be exciting. You know, he, that, that's his first ground that he's ever owned, so that's good for him. And then Curtis, on the flip side, that second farm that I was at, you know, he bought that. We bought, we've been farming that farm for the last 40 years or so. He bought it from the landlord, and, and that worked out. So, I mean, it just, it, we got a lot of big things happening on the farm, which is good to see that the younger generation is growing. Now, hopefully I can get my turn soon, in the next couple years. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Check out the links in the description, especially Midland Radio. If you guys have any farm radio needs, take care, take it easy, stay safe. Ta-ta for now. Don't forget to subscribe.